Thank you, Lord. You have fallen. Long ago you fell at Pentecost. And you've remained that way you always were. In the hearts of those who received Jesus by you. And so as you said, you are the well in us and you're the rivers through us. So thank you. And we're just along with you now in what you're saying, doing, working among us every moment of the day. Not only in these festivals, but when we're eating and talking and praying and praising and enjoying together. Thank you for your living self, Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Now we're uh, seeking to continue this morning from where we left off yesterday. As I say, the only way I know how to share what God has given me to share is by a process of continuity, moving from one session to another to another. Uh, I say to you, my usual calling is not the public ministry like this. I usually more am in groups because I like rap sessions. I like to get, get back as much as I give. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so I, I welcome anyone to come and, and uh, say, hi, I'm sure you're wrong. And I say, of course, I know you were, but I'll just prove it to you. <laughs> we'll just do that later on. Um, I knew I should get complaints for being British and too quick. Well, I can't help being British. As for being too quick, I always understood God could do anything except slow me down. <laughs> so there we are. Um, now we were led uh, yesterday to some well, I understand to be from God's word some tremendous facts. The whole universe is one, because he is one. And the whole universe is he expressed in multitudinous forms. One living person through multitudinous manifestations. Uh, and this further revelation, he's only love, so everything is love. Everything is forms of perfection. Even if we mess him up, he reforms him to perfection. <laughs> That's what he came by his son to do. Moving into the ultimate perfection. But we are able to see perfection now. We are seeing him with perfect love in perfect operation in all forms, in all ways. So we saw this as our tremendous basis. We deal with only one. But because, as the scripture says, he's eternal, immortal, invisible... Uh, he can't be manifested except by a manifested form. And so from eternity, in his own trinity, he has his own son, who is, who is the, the manifested father, the manifested God, the Lord Jesus Christ. That, as he moves down to, onto our level, that he can move us up to his level. And we're able to know the father through the son. And as we saw further, he, com com he continues to complete his, his eternal purposes through his son and sons. And they become the agents by whom the Spirit reproduces. Father, Son, Spirit. The Spirit brings through the word of faith of the Son reproductions into being. This, this creation was the first we know of. And the marvel we saw is that uh, it always had been his purpose. That through his Son, come, there should come into being a family of sons who'd level up with his son. Fantastic. Created, leveling up with the creature, with the, with the creator. And forming one in million form of sons. Sons are persons. Living persons as the father's a living person, who by the living personality will express him. Because of tremendous significance of being a... a, a uh, a man uh, 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 on the on the um, um, manifest level that the, the agents the agents of manifestation is that the, uh, 
the, the eternal one, the universal, is only seen by his manifest form. It's never seen any other way. You will never see electricity except by that. You never see electricity except by heat. You never see it. You see it by its form. You never see the atom. You see only see its forms. And you never see the living God except by his sons. By his son and then his sons. And no other way will this living person ever be manifested in the world. That's why Paul said in Romans 8, the, the groaning creation waits for the manifestation of the sons of God, not the son of God, not the, not the father. Which for its deliverance is to be brought into the glorious liberty of the children of God by the manifestation of the sons of God. Because the, because the sons are the only means in which the father manifests himself and, uh, uh, and, and reproduces his own love purposes. So it's a tremendous thing to be a person. And when, as we saw, our destiny is to be co-persons of eternity, to be co-owners, and therefore co-developers, and co-managers of God's universe. So it's a very responsible thing, as well as a very wonderful thing to be a person. And then we further saw uh, uh, that the key to be a God person is to be a love person, because that's all he is. John said the final word when he said God is love. That's all he is, nothing else. Every single thing he is, has, does is some form of perfect love. We said yesterday, we always get out of tune when we question what kind of person God is in situations. Oh, why does so and so? When we, when we say, God, you're perfect, what you do is perfect, I can't understand what you're doing. It's okay, the light's shining. Therefore, we saw... Um, this is the, um, the necessary settlement, the, uh, the eternal settlement of the, of the character of the person. The, the person of whom the whole universe is the form is nothing but love. The nature of, he, of him in his own deity manifested form, the Son, is nothing but love. That's why we always know what the Father's like, because he saw what the Son was like on earth, thank God. And therefore, the co-sons must be as spontaneously uh, 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 the same kind of sons as the son. And the son is a spontaneous expression of the love father. So he's a lover son as, as his father is a lover father. And therefore, we are um, in tune, we are in focus down here and from eternity when we've begun to be lover people and learn what it is to be lover people. How trouble is we don't understand who we are. It's our trouble. Most of our trouble is we, 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 it's misunderstanding. We are possessing our possessions. Knowing what it is to be and operate as and, and, and affirm we are lover sons on earth uh, in preparation for uh, being that, that will be our spontaneous uh, being because our being then is a, is a union. Our being then is, a, is God joined to us, expressed by us. It's spontaneity. That's our, 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 that's, that's our, our permanent basis. So we're spontaneously expressions of him with love. He's lover, so we're lovers. Then we're safe. Just as the whole universe is safe because the, far, the God is a safe God because he's a lover God. Kings and rulers and people down here are not safe when they're uh, in, all through history, self-loving people, so you get chaos. When the ruler is a, is a lover person, uh, that, that which he manages, those who he manages, move into harmony. And so this whole universe will be a harmonious universe because he has spontaneously millions of us, co-lovers, co-manifestors of what he is, co-developers, whatever form that means, with his own son. So we saw that um, the next stage of uh, uh, fundamental importance uh, is for us to... Um, Know what it is to be the person we really are and be him. What it is to be a person and to be that person. And then to function as that person. So that's what we're talking about these days. What is it to be the person, uh, be that person, and then function as that person. That's yourself, that's all. And yourself as the real self. That uh, Roland was talking about us yesterday, that new, that new man. Then we saw, we're really only, I'd say, talking still on foundations this morning. I shan't actually get on as far as I'm concerned, the practical application to our daily lives till about tomorrow.
but we're still laying the foundations. Uh, we saw this um, perhaps usually unnoticed fact that you can never be a competent person in anything until you first learn how not to do it before we know how to do it. Because all life has this strange basis. It's only, it's only manifestable. Only, it's only a conscious fact because, it's, it, it, because it has two sides to it, because it has its opposites. You cannot have light without knowing it's dark. You can't have sweet without knowing it's bitter. You can't have yes without knowing it's no. As I said yesterday, uh, you come here because you're, you're conquered nose. Your yes conquered your nose. You started, no, 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 I can't, I'm too busy. Finally, you say, yes, I will, and your yes swallows up your nose. You would only have a strong yes because you've had a good meal of, uh, meal of nose, that's all. So life cannot be any other way. That's just that's the meaning of, meaning of being, as I say. So we saw yesterday, uh, we have to say the living God, a person has conquered the opposite. He cannot lie. If he's a person, he could. Unless some fixation has taken place by which something by his own free choice is he cannot. That's what choice does. It fixes you in the, in the one. The one swallows up the other. And the, that's the whole purpose of a person to discover, to discover why it is to be a fixed person and to be that fixed person. That's why I always love that cry of the psalmist. Oh God, my heart is fixed. My heart is fixed, I will sing praise. And we are fixed if we know it now, if we're redeemed. We just haven't discovered how fixed we are, that's all. So it's phases, phases of rediscovery we need, that's all. But now, as I say, a person isn't fixed in the positive until he's first a negative. That's what training is, that's what graduation is. Nobody is fixed uh, as a carpenter or a plumber or an electrician or a doctor or a lawyer uh, until he first says, I don't teach it that way. I don't, I don't handle my electrical things that way. I don't handle my tools that way. It becomes fixed with, oh yeah, that's I, I, I've settled, I don't do it that way. In, in general speaking, he's, he's, di he's, he's discarded the wrong ways. We all can make mistakes, we humans, and we all have more to learn, but generally speaking, we discard the wrong ways, and we're competent, we're able to handle our situations. That's being fixed. Always on the, always on the inner level. Because we're consciousness, all you are is a consciousness. All you are is spirit, which is I am. All I am is a consciousness. And all operation is from the consciousness, which is I am, I desire, I know, I will, all rest follows. So everything is your consciousness. A carpenter doesn't operate by his outer tools. He operates by his, uh, his consciousness. Oh, I know how to use that. His tools are the agents for his consciousness. Oh, I know how to do that. From the knowing comes the operation. Nothing is ever done from outside, because we're never outside people. That's why outside religion uh, is no good. That's why God had to destroy it. As a great deal of good came in communism by destroying uh, ex ex external forms of ritualism. God has to use up uh, negatives to handle positives. Destroy external forms of outer gods. That's no good. It is no good either. So only when the outer gods become an inner god is any good. So only when the outer Jesus is the inner Jesus is any good. Only when the outer world is the inner world is any good. Because I'm only a person by my consciousness. So on every level of life, you operate not from your tools, not from your no outer knowledge. You operate by that which you become you. Now you are, are operating from the inside you, expressing it through your tools and agencies and so on. So we looked at. So we saw uh, that the central inner consciousness of this central being of the universe, fixed as love, and can be nothing else. Tremendous. And his purpose in, in creating people like himself, made in his image, spirit. Spirit unites his spirit. Person spirits like himself, uh, who can be co-fixed with him, and and uh, as the Bible says, co-gods with him, or co cooperators with him, in in um, whatever there is to be done in the in the whatever there is in the eternal developments of the universe by his sons. That's it. <coughs> so you see, it's the same as. You don't, don't become fixed as a carpenter without training, or fixed as a doctor, or fixed as a lawyer, or a fixed teacher. We don't become fixed as a person without training. We've got to discover personhood, and then get it fixed. Or thank God, in this case, have it fixed for us. Uh, and then only can we move on competently from the uh, whom, I, whom I am, to being who I am, and functioning as who I am. And that's the, the history of the human family. And it's always been in God's purpose 
God wasn't fooled by the sudden discovery about the devil or, or, or Ford. He meant it to be. He had to be. To make us, we had to become uh, unhealthily healthy. You had to be unhealthy for you're healthy. So we had to be unhealthy sinners for we're healthy saints. Had to be. It's all part of eternal purpose. I proved it to you yesterday. I said the Bible said he foreordained his son to be a sacrifice for a lost world before there was a lost world. So he knew all about the lost world coming before, the, before it started. That's the perfect God. You can't fool him. His heads he wins, tails he, 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 he we lose every time. So there we are. Praise God. <laughs> and so it came in. So there had to be a Garden of Eden. There had to be alternative trees. And that naughty God stuck a serpent in one of them. That was a naughty of them, wasn't it? He might have left the wrong tree in the serpent out. Just left the right tree. The right tree. We all need the right tree to be a bunch of babies. God doesn't want a bunch of babies who just know things unconsciously. He wants people who know consciously who they are and function as such. You only know consciously by finding out. That's why there are the three stages we have to pass through. One John says, we discuss as we go on, from infancy to adolescence to adults, from little children, young men, fathers. You see, a little child is unconscious. That's, a little child is very precious, but he can't manage the world. And so if there had been one tree, it would be useless. We should just be unconscious beings. Consciousness came by the opposite. Consciousness came by all yours, Adam and Eve, all is yours, I'm your father. They hardly just sit, sit unconscious, like a child, automatically receives from his parents. It's all yours. But one thing, don't touch that one. Had to be. And behind the don't touch that one was this person who did that kind of thing. Satan. Now we don't know any much about him except he's revealed to us that he, he was the person who consciously rejected being another lover and became a self-lover. <laughs> We just told little about him in John in Isaiah 14 and Ezekiel 28. Those are the two key passages. When he was made as probably God's highest creation. But as a free person, he was to be a, 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 a light bearer. His name was Lucifer, which is the Latin for bearing light. He was to be expression of him with the light which reveals him with the love. That's what we are. Lamps, lamps, lamps that reveal lights. No, I'll not be there. I'm a free person. I'm beautiful. I have infinite capacity. I'll be for myself. I'll, in fact, I'll kick him out and take his place. That's Isaiah 14, Ezekiel 28. Ezekiel 28 is his beauty. Isaiah 14 is his purpose to take God's place. So he did take God's place as a false god. That's the blindness in which we live. If the light in you is darkness, how great is that darkness? We live in light and think it's light and it's only dark. That's this self-centered world. If the light which is in you is darkness, how great is that darkness? And so self-centeredness has become a false light where we've been living until we've been disillusioned, thank God. So that's what started. And God used him. Now get this into Satan's a convenient agent. Don't fuss about Satan. Thank God for him, Satan. Satan's always God's convenient agent. He God uses him for better purposes. Whenever you see Satan turn up, say, Okay, Satan, you come in one way, I'm going to watch you go out seven ways now. <laughs> Have fun. Have faith. Don't fuss about Satan. He's God's convenient agent. We shall see we go on what useful things God's done in the world through Satan, and it still is. He got you saved through Satan. If Satan hadn't got you lost, you wouldn't get saved, would you? Oh, so you so better get... <laughs> <laughs> so you better get having a praise meeting for Satan. <laughs> <laughs> and this is the first way he used him, to get man into focus on the negative. To get man into focus on the negative. So he used Satan to draw Adam and Eve, Eve take, we poor men always have followed women all our lives, we just do what the women do. And so it starts with Eve, as usual. Yeah, you, you didn't clap that one. <laughs> um, and uh, so, so Satan got us, told us, oh, uh, this tree is very nice. What? But this tree is very nice, it's a tree they shouldn't have. Oh, there's something in this, you see, I shouldn't have it, but it's very nice. Now that's the only way in which we could discover being persons. See, to discover a big person, I've got to discover, I have appetites. I have sight. I have mental ability. Tremendous. We, like God, we have tremendous potential. We have to discover we've got it. We can only discover it by being tempted to be something for ourselves. So it had to come that way. It had to be somebody who said to us, Hi, you should be able to eat that tree. Oh, I, I, I'd like to. I've got appetites. I'd like to. Look, look, taste, look, look, look to me, it'll taste nice. I've got appetites. Come on, let's taste them. And beautiful. I never saw beauty before. Oh, my eyes are open. Endless beauty. 
Of course, for, for self-reasons, but the point is, they had, they had the capacity of uh, art and science and, 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 and uh, what comes through the eye gate and through what comes through the, the, the flesh. Oh, the flesh is beautiful. Don't run flesh now. It's only, it's only it's misused is wrong. It's God's precious agent. And Jesus Christ came in the flesh. He didn't come in, he came in the likeness of sinful flesh, but he came in the flesh. It's only the sinful part of the flesh, not the flesh, which is wrong. Oh, so, so the appetite factor is a mind. Satan said, you've got a mind. Yes, my, I have. And so they began to discover personality. Had to be. So they couldn't discover personality except be, to be for themselves. Now we had to be for ourselves, but put ourselves back into focus and then be ourselves on a new level. That's what life is. To be for yourself is what, you, what it is. In, in, the right, in the right relationship. And then you can't be yourself uh, under, under new motivation. And so they, they had this temptation, and then they went all the way. They didn't know much more, it was mainly ignorance. You know, God's so beautiful. God doesn't throw, throw sticks and bombs at, at, at his precious people. He never judged them. He just told them they were silly, that's all. He didn't judge them, he judged Satan. When, when Adam and Eve fell, it wasn't God that hid, it was they that hid. God never hides. There's no wrath in God, there's no judgment in God. It's a, a guilt in us. We project it onto God. It wasn't, Adam, it wasn't God who hid in the garden, Adam and Eve hid. And uh, uh, Adam, uh, God called him out, came in the cool of the day and called him out. And, and he said he was hiding. God said, come out, you silly fellow, I'll talk to you. I said, got him out. He never said one juror judge of man, man and woman. He judged Satan. He said, you, you're the curse. You'll eat us. You're, you, you're symbolically. That's pretty to self said this. That's hell. That's, that, that's the curse. As few dear people, you will have some sorrow. That's all he offered us, sorrow. Sorrow is a reaction to suffering. So he says, things will go wrong, and those things that go wrong will make you feel uncomfortable. Thank God you'll be uncomfortable. If we were at first uncomfortable, we shouldn't get comfort in Jesus. So he says, you'll be made sorrowful, as, as all he said, you'll get sorrow, because certain things in life will happen to you we don't like. That's all God gave. He's always on the side of man. The same time he says, all, uh, all, already there's a hidden seed you can find, which is Christ. Christ is always there. Christ was the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Romans 11, Re Revelation says, he was always there. Like a seed form. And so you can find Christ. Abel found him. Probably Adam found him. Seth found him. They found him. He was there to be found. Lots of people find who found Christ who may have known to come out of the way we came. And so you see, he's always like that. So, so you see, this, this tremendous, this world, we had to go wrong. Thoroughly wrong. We, we, we had to become captives of the spirit of self centeredness You see, humans are captives. Humans are manifestors. We're never anything by ourselves. We're manifestors of a deity. Well, that's why the Bible calls us vessels. The Bible says every human being is either a vessel of wrath, you say wrath or something, but I say wrath, the best I can get. A vessel of wrath or a vessel of mercy. The vessel is a container. We are containers of a God to whom wrath comes, or we're containers of a God to whom mercy comes. A container doesn't change. All the gospel is change of God's inside, that's all. It isn't a change of us. It's a change of the God that motivates us, that's all. Because we're always God out, God motivated. And what happened at the fall was we became motivated by the false God. He didn't make us, he only stole us. He was only a thief. We belong, always did belong to God. Our very being was in God. That's why people know how to respond to God. Thank God they do. The being of every person. I've been in a mission in Africa. I know in the Africans there's always a spirit relation, spirit response. Everybody, you be around the world, you know that about the role of the world. That's the spirit everywhere. Because we're, we're in his being. So basically, we, we, God, Satan simply stole us and distorted us, that's all. But he captured us and made us slaves. And so, in that slavery, we went the self-way, the self-centered, self-seeking, self-gratifying, uh, self-affirming way. And, and thank God, uh, gradually, by this way, by this knock and that knock, we find it doesn't work. We get disillusioned. If you're a redeemed person here, you've been a disillusioned person, haven't you? It's been a, a rock-bottom disillusion. You found that old life's wrong. Not outside you. Not, it helped by being told, being found inside. Inside you find, I'm a wrong person. I'm away from God, I'm in no peace, I'm living a rotten life, I'm doing rotten things I shouldn't do, there's something wrong with me, God have mercy on me. And there isn't a person here who's been redeemed who didn't first say, I'm a wrong person, have mercy on me. Not because of outer forms, it may have come through outer forms, but by, by, by inner consciousness. So that's been the whole purpose, thank God. Uh, because we couldn't be right unless we first been wrong. Because we might go do it again. 
You see, if you've been a th- in, in, a, in a thoroughly wrong way, and you've been torn to pieces by it, and you go out for you say, <laughs> I'm not going back there again. Of course, we may visit when they were looking, we won't live there again. Difference, you see what I mean? Yeah, if you're born again, you'll never go back. You can't go back. You can't go back. I'll tell you why later on. As I say, you may visit when they were looking, but you won't live there any longer. I don't mind paying visits so long as I don't live. I can see my English doesn't get a course, so you don't get the point. It's a pretty good point. <laughs> um, so you see, uh, we, uh, if, if you're a redeemed person, you've, you've been a basically disillusioned person. You've had to be wrong and known you're wrong and be disgusted with it and cried for mercy and whatever for it may take, whether towards yourself, towards other people, towards God. That you, somewhere, if life's to mean anything, you've got to find the change. Now, how can the change take place? Uh-huh. Uh, that's what sends us everything in the sun, the sun. Everything. Because uh, slaves can't redeem slaves. Slaves can't redeem slaves. We're a, a captive race. Slave can't receive slave. A slave may, ex- ex- may express a little, lead, a little freedom in trying to be something else. Like we, in our unsaved days, tried a little to be good. That didn't make us good. We just tried and came back where we belonged again. Slaves have little freedom they can express with their slaves. They can't get out. Slavery. And this is the, been the eternal purpose of, from, uh, of, of the Father from, from eternity, that his son should be the head, of the, ho- of the head of the true race, the head of the eternal family, the founder, source, and, 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 and uh, head brother of the, 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 the family of the spirit dimension. Because uh, the old family is a flesh dimension. Flesh is good, only misused. It's been a misused. It's a precious flesh. It's to be redeemed flesh that we'd have redeemed bodies. But it's been a misused flesh. And through our flesh, and so our agreement with our flesh, we've gone these other ways. So we've been a flesh people, and out of that, marvels come. Look at this universe. Look at this world. Marvels come out of fallen men. Look at the marvels of invention and investigation. If that comes out of fallen men, what's got to come out of unfallen men? When the whole, whole son family is, 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 is in full redemption. Uh, so uh, this is the situation. Now this is where the, the only person who could Redeemus was a person who had, had a claim on us, who had, a, uh, who had a basic relationship with us, and could do something for us we couldn't do for ourselves. And the one person who did that was our Creator. He who created us, he said, after all we belonged to him, he could do something for us. That's the Lord Jesus Christ. So there's no way in which the human race could be redeemed from slavery unless there was one who was our basic Creator, created our spirits and our souls and bodies, who in some way could represent us and get us out of our bondage. That's what Jesus Christ did. <laughs> our history and glory and our songs return is the Lamb that was slain. The Lord Jesus Christ crucified and risen. So uh, he, that's why, the, to my mind, the supreme title for him is the last Adam. It only comes in that form actually once. It's, it's, it's implied in Romans 5. It's said in Romans 15. In, in 1 Corinthians 15. The last Adam. Why? Adam's head of a race. Adam's a progenitor. We're all reproductions of, of the flesh Adam, so we're flesh people. Came under the same slavery that our, our, our father had. For good purposes. We had to learn the slavery before we learned the freedom. That's all right. But I, this, this, he's the last Adam. He's taken the place. That was the first Adam in the Bible was only called a figure, only a shadow. The last Adam's a real Adam. Spirit is real. This is figure. This is shadow. We've got to get out of living on a, on, a, on a shadow relationship to reality, spiritual relationship. This is this one. He came to, to bring into being the, 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 the human family on his true spirit dimension. God dimension. He did that by uh, becoming one of us. Uh, becoming an ordinary human. That's why we always preserve the incarnation. The Bible never says the key to your faith is the cross. The key to your faith is, do, did Jesus Christ come in the flesh? That's 1 John. That's the key test of a person. If he's a believer, he says, Jesus Christ, God's Son, became a flesh Christ, a human being. Incarnation. So, uh, we're faced with a, a unique person. This, he was us, but he wasn't us. He was a unique son. So, he never touches uniqueness. He's the, he's the creator son. We're the created sons. He's the deity son. We're the... I don't know what to call us because we move uh, uh, by grace on the level of that brotherhood that's the best I can say now we all know what he did 
If you ever had to prove himself as a, as a full human, he had to be hit by all humanity as a hit. So he was hit by the devil. Not only in the 40 days, all the time. But the devil could never get inside him. You are an inner consciousness, not an outer person. Anybody can do anything on your outer, it's how you take it matters. We'll talk about that later on. All life is how you see it and take it, not how it happens to you. You manage life because you manage it as you see it and take it from within. Because that's all you are. And so Satan could never get Jesus because he couldn't get him inside. When he tempted Jesus, oh no, my mother, my father, he, he, was, he, he, uh, he always was a, 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 a vessel of his father, not a, not a vessel of wrath, a vessel of mercy. He always had a, the, 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 the living God inside him. So he could be hit, Satan could hit him every way outside, couldn't touch him inside. But he was a real man and went through everything we go through. Then he came to the final end. <laughs> we call the final end death. The real final end is hell. Don't be too body-minded. Don't be too much, too much of a body fusser. Who cares about your body? Get, get a new one quick. Don't be so busy keeping people on earth. Hurry them up to heaven. Uh, in our mission, we always have a congratulation when someone dies for Jesus. We sing, we sing your dance and people, well, people die because they've gone to be real people. We don't say, oh dear, dear, dear. We say, praise God you go on me, I can follow you quickly. <laughs> so don't be body fussers. Be spirit enjoyers. And don't take too much fuss about your body. Say, praise Lord anyhow, as long as the spirit shines out, that's what matters. As long as the spirit shines out. If a person's sick, help, help them to be sure one thing, they're praising Jesus. If they get pra praising Jesus, they'll probably get healed quicker too. Death, physical death isn't the point. Destiny is the point. Death is uh, part of this corruption ended in death. That's not the point. Destiny is the point. Uh, this dies. Where does this go? And that's where the Bible again says we're spirits. Because the Bible says that there are two, there are, there are two ways. Uh, for the, uh, the unredeemed, the spirits in prison, to whom Jesus went to preach. The redeemed, spirits are just been made perfect. Hebrews 12. So it's, 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 a, uh, it's destiny. Now that's seriousness. That's the seriousness of the blood of Christ. That's the blood of Christ and the body of Christ. That's where they're subdivided in the Lord's Supper. The blood of Christ and the body of Christ with the two uh, uh, vitally important um, meanings to them. The blood of Christ was his, his own blood. That's himself. That person uniquely risked hell for us. That's where he went. Suffered on the cross. I think we make too much of the sufferings of Christ. We should see the glory there. He saw glory in it. They saw glory. They saw a king up there. You see, faith transcends suffering. Uh, Jesus never acted as a sufferer on the cross. Think of a person in that agony, considering, did they mean it? Isn't that beautiful? In that agony, say, they didn't mean it, Father. Those soldiers didn't know what they were doing. They didn't mean it. Forgive them. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that, isn't that seeing God's beauty in everybody? Forgive them, Father. They didn't know what they were doing. They, they, they just did their duty in crucifying me. It wasn't his crucifixion bothering him. It was those, uh, those that, that God shouldn't, those people out there should have forgiveness. Isn't that beautiful? See, he was, it wasn't his physical. He transcended his physical in the glory. So I think, we, I think we shouldn't make good Friday misery. We should make it a praise. Not only Easter Sunday. And we, because that teaches us praising your sufferings. That's our glory. When we're able to praise in our su sufferings, that's our glory. Know the secret of how to do it. And so he went, that wasn't the problem. The problem was he went to hell. Now I don't know. But he had to walk by faith as we did. And he might mighty well be, he might have said he might remain there. See, he represented the whole sins, the, the products, the consequences of the sins of the world. The consequences of the sins of the world is our guilt, uh, uh, the wrath, the judgment, the eternal destiny. That's a part of our sins, the things we've done. The, the, we, the, he bore our sins. That's not our sin. That's different. I'll talk about it in a moment. It's our sins. Sins are the product. Sin is the producing uh, uh, principle. That's different. He bore our sins. And our sins take us through, into guilt, into judgment, into wrath, into hell. And the Bible simply says, if you are fixed in that condition, that, that's what it says. That's the blood of Christ. The blood of Christ was, the blood symbolized outpoured life. And he really did die. When your blood's gone, you're dead. So it's a symbol to us that he really did die. He didn't die physically. I mean, he did, but physical body died. He went to hell. That's the first thing Peter said in, in the great speech after Pentecost. Thou wilt not leave my soul in hell. So he must have been in hell if he wasn't going to be left there. See the point? Jesus Christ went to hell. He went where you and I are destined to go. That's the risk he took. I so put it to risk. He had to walk by faith. Could it be he'd be left there on our behalf? Of course he couldn't be. He didn't belong there. 
Satan had no control over him. So, as representing a, a sin race, with its sin stain, its sin guilt, its sin wrath, its sin judgment, its sin destiny, all those sins he, uh, represent us, he left, came out, left them behind. He shut that door of hell for all who receive him. For the whole human race, the world was reconciled unto him. He said, they haven't found out, that's all. This gospel had been a world gospel. There's never been a little bit, few, few Christian gospels. It's been a world gospel. That the world through him might be saved. Reconcile the world, I'm so I love the world mindedness you get in, the, in, the, in the, um, both the, the Gospel of John and the Epistle of John. And so, in that one act, he, he wiped out all that would come to us of, uh, out of our guilt, a condemnation, wrath, judgment, hell. Don't have any of it. You sin by retaining any sense of guilt or wrath or, or, or judgment about you. Your fast is, is out of sight, it's out of God's sight, it's out of your sight, we'll leave it out of sight. If it's, a, if it's as far as from the east is from the west, that's a pretty good distance, I reckon. <laughs> if it's in the depths of the sea, they're trying to find um, a power or something down there, now having a hard work. <laughs> the, the strong terms they use, God's white thing, it's wiped out. That's the precious blood of Christ. <coughs> Sometimes people sort of squirm at the blood, they don't understand, they don't mean it. Like a Mohammed, I worked among Mohammedans, they don't understand, they've got a prejudiced idea of Jesus Christ, so they spit on him. They're not to blame for that, they don't, they don't understand the perfect Jesus we mean. They've got distorted images. And so there are some people who sort of will say they scrub at the blood, they don't understand the preciousness. It's a symbol of a, this, this God life outpoured, went where I should go, to cut me offside, never need go, and never have the guilt on the wrath of the which belongs there, it's out. That's the, the death and resurrection of Jesus on that level. The other level is the crucified body. Now that's very remarkable. We do not participate in the blood, that's his blood, we do participate in the body. That's why in communion it says, uh, you take the communion of the blood of Christ, yes, you take it recognizing it's his, his blood shed for you. You participate in the body, for we being many a one bread, one body, we participate in the body. Why? Because we are that body. Now that's great significance. We are that body. How do I know that we're that body? The Bible says, you were crucified with Christ. Uh, you were buried with him. You were risen with him. You were ascended with him. That's all that Romans and the Galatians and comes up again and again in the Colossians, all those, those, those letters. Now we are there. Why? Because you see, our bodies contain the sin principle. Sins were the products which came out, the hates, fears, lies, all these things, for which we've broken the law, for which there was a judgment and wrath and all that. Christ has become the end of the law, wiped it out, or become the completion of the law, shall we say. Uh, so there's no more of that left. Now, um, that's not our problem. Our problem isn't the product, it's the producer. Our problem is the motivation which causes me to be self centeredness Out of my self centeredness comes my hates and my fears and my lusts and so on. They're a product. What matters is this wretched motivation in the body. Now, that's sin in the body. Sin is the principle of self centeredness It's really another term for Satan. Love is, is not a term for love is God, of course. It's, it's the principle of being, which is God's being. And sin, self centeredness is the principle of, of, of the false being, which is Satan's being. So you may speak of the spirit, it speaks in Ephesians to the spirit of, 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 of Prince of the Power of the Air within us. It speaks in 1 John, the spirit in error. Call him sin, call him spirit, doesn't matter. That's the person who's possessed us through the fall. We are vessels with a wrong, but wrong owner in us. That owner went out in the death and resurrection of the body of Jesus. See, the body contains the owner. Now, that body represents us. We were crucified. We were died with him. We were buried. A, a dead body has no spirit in it. And when that dead body lay and says, we were buried with him, there was no longer left the spirit of self certainness which grabbed us and enslaved us. That's the completion. And that went... It's that empty dead body put to death in the flesh, quickened by the Spirit in 1 Peter 3. Now into that dead body came the new Spirit, His Spirit, His, the fixation of the Spirit of self-giving love, taking the place of the Spirit of self-loving love. That's the Gospel. That both removes what should come to us as a, uh, as a consequence of our, sins, our sin life, uh, wrath, judgment, so on, so on, so, and it changes our condition which Roland was bringing out so beautifully yesterday, changes our condition, we put off the old man, put on the new man, we've got to understand it more what that means. So uh, the, uh, the gospel means, out goes the hell and the wrath and the judgment and the fear of death and the condemnation, all that wretched stuff, it's not there, we become precious in God's sight. See yourself, you're perfectly precious. God delights in you, I have a laugh, I always think God delights in me, but he says he does, so I suppose he does. And when I, when I look around on you, I say, well he makes pretty poor choices somehow, but that's his business, not mine. <laughs> 
<laughs> if he loves you, okay, I love you too. <laughs> so there he has, he's precious, but precious. Don't downgrade yourself. When you cease to downgrade yourself, you don't downgrade your neighbor. Upgrade yourself. You're precious. Every bit of you is precious. Cut out, taken out, that old spirit out, and the stains gone. In Jesus Christ. Raised again. Now there are, um, now we come back to ourselves. We begin to be little ourselves. Uh, there are certain phases of consciousness which have to become us. Like any person being educated in a profession, you learn phases, oh I've got it. I know I'd do it. I know I'd do it. That's consciousness. There are certain phases. Uh, the Bible puts them as a threefold set. I've quoted you. The Bible says you start as a little kid, little children, you go on to an adolescent who's found his own abilities. That's the ferment of adolescence, a young man. You go into fatherhood when you're reproducing, <laughs> bringing out to the world. There are three phases. Crucifixion, resurrection, ascension. Romans 1 to 5, Romans 6 to 8, Romans 9 to 16. All these things are all through the Bible. So now we're back on a person. Now, the, the royalty of a person is my ability to choose. Now, the simplest word for choice is faith. It's unfortunate, and that's why new translations are good, that we tighten up relig religious words and make them have religious connotations. So we put little things in a little, little framework. Faith is a universal uh, 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 action of the personality. The only action of the personality, the only basic action of, the, of you is faith. Because faith isn't some religious idea. Faith is your inner capacity for choice. With the heart, man believes. With the mind, you can accept. You've got to start there. Uh -huh, uh -huh, I agree with that. But you don't operate on your mind. You operate your inner self, which uh, really we use the word choose, which put yourself to something. That's faith. You put yourself to something. Look here. You didn't come here by your, th by your thinking. You had to have think thoughts. You were invited, and here's the place, and so on. What you do? You came because you chose. You said, I'll come. You didn't come here by your body. You came here by your choice. Your automobile or your airplane just bought your faith, that's all. Because <laughs> uh, faith is, is, is a tremendous, it's the basis, of, it's the fact, capacity of choice. But that's the moment of choice. That's the word of faith. You say, I'll do that. I'll take that. I'll go there. All life is that. Um, a word is a person in action. A word is a person in action, a word of faith. Uh, everything you do comes out of a word. Uh, and that becomes an act on earth and you take it. And the law of faith is that's how you get experience. All right, now, here's some food. Well, you believe in it, you see it. That's all right, that's enough of it. That's not good enough, you believe it and see it. Uh, I think we're pretty eager in going farther over here, lining up and taking it and rather enjoy it, don't we? We take it. You don't take it in your body. You take it because you choose to take it. Oh, I'm going to have that. Inwardly, you've chosen, you've got to take it. Now, what happens? Poor you, you've got to take what you take. If, 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 if you have that tummy ache, it's your fault for eating too much, that's all. Your food takes you. The law of experience is the take us took him. What you take takes you. All life is that. All life is you are taken over by that which you take. You come here. Well, you take, instead of staying at home or going to some other job, you take coming here. All right, you take coming. I'll come. You come. It's got you now. You're here, stuck here for, four minutes, for a few more days. Of course, the, the, uh, the basic idea is because you freely choose, you like to be taken over. So everyone's a slave to their choices. Because you freely choose, you're meant to like it. It doesn't always work out quite like that on earth, you're meant to. So you enjoy being here because you chose to, it's taking you over. So all that, really or eternally, is, being, is, is freely through your mind, coming, no, no, I'm taking it, it's available, it's desirable, I hope it's allowable. You can't prove it's allowable until you've experienced it. That's where experience comes in. You say, it's, 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 uh, it's available, I'm invited here, it's desirable, oh, I'd like to come. Reliable, I guess it'll be there. Then you move. I'll come. And so it's your inner self that's brought by outer form. And then your, your self becomes caught up by what you are here. You enter into the system, the timetable, and everything else, and move in. And because you freely do it, you're meant to enjoy it. Thank God, I think most of us do enjoy it down here. Uh, but but look, you're, you're a nice little slave here for five days, so behave yourself as such. <laughs> caught up by what we are. God says, say, because he can't lie. He's caught up by love. And I guess he enjoys it. <laughs> Everybody's a slave to what they choose. This is the royalty of a person, God or man. That's your royalty, your ability to choose, and your being fixed by what you choice, by what you choose. Now, that may be often temporary. You take food, you forget an hour or two. 
Uh, you take being here, you forget it again in five days' time. You won't forget what you've got, I hope, but you forget how you've been here. All life you, it has those temporary takings. You take a profession, it takes you over. You can change your profession, but mainly, well, if you learn a profession, you probably take, you're kept on that line, probably. You, 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 uh, you uh, become a, f- a mother and a family. You're taken over by the responsibility and the, and the love and the, of bringing up a family and so on, whatever take, form it takes. So, you see, a person is a person who freely takes lots of things, lots of things, temporarily or for longer times, you're taking over what you take. Now, the supreme moment in your human history, uh, uh, beyond which, you, uh, higher than which we'll never go, is when you, you and I voluntarily transferred our capacity for taking from things material to a person who is immaterial, from matter to spirit. Now, you see, even your religion could be mad. That's why I say this book can't save you until it becomes a person inside you. It can only lead you. You, uh, you can't say by a book. You're saved by receiving a person through the book, and that person becomes you. You're saved by the person, not the book. The words I speak unto you, their spirit, their life. Nothing outside you takes you. That's why outside religion has got to go. That's why I say it's quite good way in many ways that communism blew up false professions of religion in Russia. It's hard to gain. Communism has shaken us back to proper faith. We owe that to the devils of communism. Shaken us back to find a real faith. Instead of a phony, externally ritualistic stuff. I don't say it's the place for some ritualism, but you know it can eat you up. So you see, the outside, you're never held by the outside. You're only held by what you are inside. Nothing ever, ever, otherwise ever holds you. Now, this world or any other world. Now then, what did we do uh, in this moment of choice? You become, some way or another, disillusioned with your present condition. That's the word, probably, and the gospel, or perhaps the example of other people. You felt they got something you hadn't got. You were missing something. There was a defeat and a hate and a fear and a strain and, and wrong things on in your life, whatever form it took. You felt you were a wrong person somewhere, out from God somewhere. Now, that was your disturbed background. Now, that disturbed your faith. Up to that time, you tried to have a faith in your presentation. You tried to laugh it off. We tried to laugh life and ha- off, laugh fun, but often behind laugh is a, is a hollow ring, underneath is a, uh, a torn up person inside. Um, you try to laugh it off, or you try to philosophize it, or oh, I don't believe that stuff. Or, I, or, or you've tried to have some outer religion, oh, I'm a church person, I've been baptized, and so on. You try, uh, but all that's outer stuff, and somehow that's not settled you, that's not satisfied you, that's why you're here. Something's wrong. So, you had the disillusioned faith. You've had a material faith on a philosophy, on a religion, or maybe on your good works, on your good resolutions, or on your bad works. And the bad way you've been, and the wrong things, all that. That's been the, the, uh, um, that upon which your faith has centered. Now that's been shaken up. That's not good enough. Well, where else can I believe? Now, this is the critical moment. When you turn to the Jesus Christ presented to you in the Bible, that's why we have the Word of God. That's why I have the gospel, that's why I have witness, to show us him, the, 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 the son who became one of us, and then went through a process of redemption. We didn't understand all about it when we first come to him, and comes up again. We have this person. The critical moment is, you transfer your faith, not to crucify Jesus, but to risen Jesus. You see, a crucifixion is history. Anybody can believe a crucified Jesus just in history. You can't believe a risen, a risen Jesus in history. That's beyond history. That's the new dimension. The risen Jesus is a spirit dimension. And you're never saved just by seeing a Christ who died for you. Well, you may in ignorance, but I mean, generally speaking, you're not saved by believing in Christ who died for you. You're saved by receiving the Lord Jesus Christ as alive. And that means you've moved into the spirit dimension. You've dared now, for the first time in your human history, to attach your inability of choice to one you can't see, can't face, can't touch, can't hear. But something in you says to you, this is the one. This is the Son of God, died for me, rose again, loves me, accepts me, gives me, puts me in the family of God. This is what I receive. So faith means somewhere along the line you've consciously related yourself uh, to this, this one who did die, who does, arrive, who does live. And you've moved into relating yourself to a person who wants the true dimension, which is the spirit dimension, not the earthly. Now the law of faith, the principle of faith, always has the operation. You experience and are taken over what you take. What you take, takes you. You move in, it takes you, and you experience it, it takes you, whether temporarily or permanently. Now, this is, what, this, this is what the consequence. Now, this is the first time, up to that time, your material faith has produced material results. You've taken food, there's the food. Take a chair, there's the chair. Take here, here you are. So you get material evidences of your faith. This is immaterial. You're now believing a person you can't see, you can't feel, you can't touch, you can't hear, in that sense. 
uh, the word of God can only guide you. You're receiving him. Now, the, the, um, the material you get into you then is the witness inside you. Yes, he does love me. Yes, he is my father. Now, that's the first great reality we have in eternity. Consciousness is reality. And if you're a born-again person, that's come into your heart, well, he does love me. God is my father. Jesus is my saviour. He did shed his blood for me. He is my Lord. A, 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 a new level of thrill has come into you. A level of light. You see, light isn't this. This is the external form. God is light. Light's a person. These are forms of light by which things are, 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 are materialised. Uh, everything is materialised light. He is the light. Now, with our eyes, uh, we see light in certain form. With our, uh, our ears, we hear that it comes in sound form and uh, light comes in, t in atomic form. We touch it. So, you touch the, uh, the uh, outbreaks of, of light outwardly in all those forms. When you're born again, you come in touch with him who is light and inward your conscience. Now, real light is inspiration. Real light, oh, that's it. If you're born again, somehow it's on you, Jesus does love me. He's my saviour. Somehow I can't prove a thing, but somehow in some I know he's my saviour. He's all my past is gone. I belong to him, he belongs to me. God's my father. A, a thrill has come to you. True light is inspiration and ecstasy. And every born again person is in a permanent inner ecstasy. Which may take outer fun, but the ecstasy is there whether the outer fun is there or not. Because that's light. True light is a person. And we are part of that person. We are the light. We've come into union with him who is light. And the effect of him is, oh, that's it. How well I remember the day I said, oh, that's it. I've been brought up a church for but the moment came and I had to receive him as a personal saviour. When I asked him to forgive my sins, meaning it, oh, that's what the blood means, light. I'd heard about the blood across all my church days. Oh, that's what it means. I saw. Oh, I don't go to hell then because of that precious blood. Now, Jesus has come real to me. Inner consciousness. God is my father. I was in the middle of the football season as a young man then. I well remember saying, oh, uh, that's emotion. We English are always afraid of emotion. Oh, that's emotion. It'll go tomorrow. First thing, I woke up next morning. Jesus, Jesus said, my Savior, God's my father. I'm still there after millions of years. I'm still, uh, 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 it's, this is a permanent thing. Light is inspiration and ecstasy. Now, that's it. Uh, if you're a born again person, you've been taken, not you took. In your need, you took him. He took you. And you're born again, not because you say, I hold him, but somehow it's a deed. I don't know how he loves me. I don't know how he's forgiven me. I don't know how he's my saviour. Something's happened in you which is settled. That's a permanent consciousness. You'll die for that one. You'll burn for that one. Because this, this is the new spirit reality. And you moved into the new spirit dimension. Now, the last thing I'm saying, and I'll have to move on to the next one tomorrow, is this. Um, uh, the, the, the evidences... There are two evidences which can be handled by as you like. They're peace and love. They both come in the Romans 5 chapter which explains what you get when you receive Jesus. Peace means if you're born again, oh, uh, there's nothing, that, that fear's gone. I'm not afraid of my sins and hell. I'm not afraid. Somehow it's right with God. Peace. Peace with God of our Lord Jesus Christ. If you're born again, a person has come into you. The peace of God is somehow settled you up. You're not happy because you're God's your father and you're at peace with God. That's your inner experience. That's the first fruit of the new birth. The other, I'd say, more important fruit is you can't help it, you begin to love. You cannot help it. It's not you loving. Your love by itself is self-loving self. But into you has come the spirit of love. What happens? Romans 5 tells us, it says, that For God's love, God's love, not yours, is shed abroad in your hearts by the Holy Spirit given us, and you can't help beginning to love. And every born again person is a lover. You can't help it. Because it, it, the revelation of Christ in you you can't, oh, I can't help loving him. You think you're loving him, it isn't it's his love begun to operate in you. You begin to love Christ with his own other love. You can't help it. Life is spontaneous. It isn't, oh, I've got to do it. You can't help it. You can't help it. You're a driven poor thing. You're a poor driven slave. I've been trying to wriggle out for 40 years and can't wriggle out anyhow. Once you're caught, there's no escape. Really, see? Now, th now, now, that's the proof. You become a lover. Now, you don't know much about it yet, but you've begun to be a lover son 